In this video, I'll show you how to compute antiderivatives for several types of functions, 1 over x, trig functions, and exponential functions. Let's start by recapping how to compute antiderivatives for power functions. In our notation, capital F denotes an antiderivative of a function little f, and c represents any real number, like 17 or pi. The rules for dealing with power functions is that if f of x equals x to some power p, then to compute its antiderivative, you add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. And to be more general, you can add a constant c. And if f of x is a constant function k, then its antiderivative is equal to kx plus c. And there is one important caveat. We could only do this when the power was not equal to negative 1. What could we do to compute an antiderivative in this situation? Our goal is to find the antiderivative for x to the negative 1. x to the negative 1 can also be written as 1 over x. Can you think of a function whose derivative is 1 over x? You might have recalled that the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. So, an antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log of x plus c. There's an issue here, though. The domain of little f, that is, all of the values of x you can use as inputs to little f, includes all non-zero numbers. In particular, the domain includes negative numbers. But the natural log function can't be evaluated at zero or negative values, so the domain of the antiderivative is only positive numbers. We'd like the domain of the antiderivative to match that of little f, so we need to come up with an antiderivative for all non-zero values of x. If you think about what the graph of the natural log of x looks like, you can see that it is only defined for positive values of x. One way to let it also be defined for negative values of x is to change this to a natural log of the absolute value of x. Then take a moment to think about what a derivative graph would look like. For negative values of x, the value of the derivative would be close to zero, and then have large negative values. For positive values of x, the value of the derivative would be large and positive and then become close to zero. And this would be a graph of 1 over x. So the derivative of natural log of absolute value of x is 1 over x, or, in other words, the natural log of the absolute value of x is an antiderivative of x to the negative 1. Although this isn't a full proof of why the absolute value works, hopefully it gives you a sense of why this is reasonable. Next, let's look at antiderivatives for trig functions. Let's start with the three basic trig functions. Our goal is to find functions whose derivatives are sine, cosine, and tangent. Now would be a good time to pause the video and see if you can find these antiderivatives. Two of these antiderivatives are relatively simple compared to the third antiderivative. So let's begin by listing the derivatives of trig functions. Here are the six basic trigonometric functions, and here are the derivatives. From the first row, we can immediately get that an antiderivative for cosine of x is sine of x. So a general antiderivative for cosine of x is sine of x plus a constant. From the second row, we can see that an antiderivative for negative sine of x is cosine of x. So the general antiderivative for sine of x is negative cosine of x plus c. Now what about tangent? If you look in the derivative column, there isn't any derivative that's equal to tangent. So we are not going to immediately pick up an antiderivative formula for tangent. So we are not going to be able to fulfill our goal for an antiderivative for tangent yet, but we can get other antiderivatives from the table. Here is one example. Let's take secant times tangent, for example. This row says that an antiderivative for secant x tangent x is secant x. So a general antiderivative for secant times tangent is secant of x plus c. And we could do this for the other rows in the table, too. Now, let's look at antiderivatives for exponential functions. What if f is an exponential of the form b to the x? And we'll keep in mind that b needs to be positive. Our goal is the same as before, finding a function whose derivative is b to the x. Can you think of such a function? You might remember that the derivative of e to the x is itself, so maybe just b to the x would work? If we compute the derivative of b to the x, we'd get b to the x times the natural log of b. And if we remember that the natural log of b is really just a number, 
then we can try dividing by this number. So let's try computing the derivative of 1 over the natural log of b times b to the x. Since 1 over the natural log of b is just a constant, we can rewrite this derivative as 1 over the natural log of b times the derivative of b to the x. And then, this derivative is 1 over the natural log of b times b to the x times the natural log of b. After canceling the natural log of b, we get b to the x as the derivative, which matches our original function. So, the general antiderivative of the exponential function is 1 over the natural log of b times b to the x plus c, with the assumption that b does not equal 1, because it would make the natural log of b equal to 0. Now, let's look back at what we've figured out. If capital F is an antiderivative of the function little f, and c is a real number, we already knew how to compute antiderivatives of power and constant functions. Now we have a rule for 1 over x, and we also have rules for sine, cosine, and secant tangent, and there were other rules that we could figure out from the trig table. And we now also have a rule for antiderivatives of exponential functions.